Thank you very much. Do you have any questions, please? Mr. President. Any for the uh, great executives? Mr. President? Yeah. Um, it's obviously been a long day for a lot of Americans, but I'd like to give you an opportunity to address some of your tweets from this morning. Uh, you tweeted, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. How would you know that phrase and not know its racially charged history? Well, I've heard that phrase for a long time. I don't know where it came from, where it originated. I view that in phrase as... In 1967, the Miami police... Well, I don't know. I've also it. heard from many other places, but I've heard it for a long time, as most people have. And frankly, it means when there's looting, people get shot and they die. And if you look at what happened last night and the night before, you see that. It's very common. And that's the way that was meant, and that's the way I think it was supposed to be meant. But I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it originated. I wouldn't know a thing like that. But I will say it's very accurate in the sense that when you do have looting, like you had last night, people often get shot and they die. And that's not good, and we don't want that to happen. Yeah, please. Thank you, Mr. President. In the past, you've criticized NFL players for their prote protest against police brutality, given what we've seen with George Floyd and what we saw with the delays in, in the case of Ahmaud Arbery. Does that change your views around those NFL protests? And also, given that you had a message for those in the streets in Minneapolis, do you have a statement to make about the police that are involved in such police brutality incidents? Yeah, I didn't like what I saw at all. I thought it was a terrible thing, a terrible picture. I think that it's, uh, it's sad in so many ways from the standpoint of the family. Uh, when you look at George Floyd and his family and you see uh, what that's done to them, uh, just just a terrible thing. It's, uh, he was in tremendous pain, obviously, and uh, couldn't breathe. It was very obvious to anybody that watched it. It was a very, very sad thing for me to see that. Uh, we also know that uh, most policemen, you see the great job they do. They do a fantastic job, but this was a terrible insult to police and to policemen. And uh, I know the uh, Justice Department will, as you know, it's a local local case, but I know the Justice Department is also looking at it very strongly. Does that change your views around like, the NFL protests? Say it again, I can't. Does that change your views around the NFL protest on this issue? They were peaceful protests. Does that change your, your, your yeah, stance on that Yeah, it should be a all? peaceful protest. I think really uh, the, in, in memory of uh, George Floyd, I think it should be peaceful. It's, uh, it's terrible. Uh, he, he spoke with his family today. Terrific people. Uh, I, I think it's so bad for the memory when you see a thing like that going on. And hopefully that won't happen tonight. And as you know, the National Guard has arrived and they're there. But hopefully everything will be uh, very different tonight. Last night was very sad on many different levels. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Yeah. Referencing the Rose Garden, we see tensions with China over the virus now over Hong Kong. Are we witnessing the start of a Cold War between the United States and China? Well, we're certainly not happy with what happened with respect to China. They have a, uh, a virus that started, and when it got out of control, perhaps, I assume that's what happened, it got out of control, whichever way, and they stopped it from going to China, but they didn't stop it from going to the rest of the world. So nobody likes that. That was not good. They did not do a good job. So I don't know if it was incompetence or it was done for some other reason. But I know that I didn't see anything in Beijing and I didn't see anything in other Chinese cities, but I did see them in New York, in London, in Paris. We saw them in Spain and we saw them in Italy. We saw the, the enemy, the invisible enemy come out. And all over the world, 186 countries, and probably more than that now. And uh, they stopped it in China, but they didn't stop it going to Europe and the United States and the rest of the world. So uh, what's that all about? And we have to do a very strong study and figure that out. If I could follow up, uh, are you going to eliminate the special status for Hong Kong? I know you announced the measures all. Well, we're talking about doing a lot of things, and uh, we're not uh, – we're very, very saddened by what happened to our relationship with China. They should have never allowed this to happen. They could have stopped it at the source. We asked them to come in and help them, and they didn't want help from anybody, even the World Health Organization. They wanted to go in, and they were delayed. But we asked to go in very specifically, and they didn't want any help. They didn't need any help, and then it got out of control in some form. But it didn't seem to get out of control when it came to going to other parts of China because it didn't go very far. But it did come to the United States. It did come to Europe. It went all over the world. 
Mr. President. Mr. President. Yeah. Mr. President. Was your conversation uh, with the Floyd family after the Rose Garden event, what was the, the thing you were trying to impress upon them, and did they have a message for you? Well, I just expressed my sorrow. Uh, that was a horrible thing to witness. And I, I've seen bad things. I've seen many bad things. And that was just a, uh, just a horrible thing to witness and to watch. And it would certainly look like there was no excuse for it. Mr. President, right. did they have Mr. President. For you at all? Did they communicate? Uh, they were grieving very much. Look, it's their brother. And uh, they were grieving. And I could see very much that they loved their brother. Okay. Mr. President, yeah, in the did, back, did we, please. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much, Mr. President. The United States and Brazil right now have more cases than of COVID-19 than any other country. Can you understand me? I want Brazil. You said yes. I, my question is: there are many comparisons between the way you and the Brazilian president handled the pandemic. Do you think it's a fair comparison? And how long do you think the travel ban will be in place? Well, the Brazilian president is a friend of mine, and he's working very hard, and they do have a big, big outbreak. And I can tell you, he's a, he's a very good man, and he loves his country incredibly well. They've had a hard time. There's no question about it. They went a different route than we did. He is against— We did a shutdown. They decided to do it a different way. They're having a very hard time. He is against social distancing at the moment where the Brazil is— take that just for a second? Sure. Right? Yeah, the, he is against so, social distancing and lockdown at the moment where the numbers in Brazil are skyrocketing. What, what do you think about that? Well, he went a different way. Brazil went a different way, and uh, certainly they're having a hard time. I don't want to be critical of anybody because I have great respect for him. And he's doing a very good job with the country that he got hit. He got hit like everybody else. They went about it differently than us. I closed down from China. I closed down from Europe. And we did a lot of close downs. We had to close down from Brazil. You're asking about Brazil. We closed down, as you know, the other night from Brazil. But uh, he's, uh, it's a tough time they're having in Brazil. It's a great country, great place, great people. But they're having a very tough time. How long do you think the ban will be in place for Brazil? And are you also thinking can, Russia and, yeah, and I'd India? like to take the ban off as soon as we can. Okay? Yeah, as soon as we can. Yes, please. Yeah, Mr. President, do you believe that there is a problem with police brutality in America? And if you do, what, what would you do about it? Well, I think that police brutality certainly is something that we've been hearing about, reading about, studying. I have for many years. Uh, and we all have to say, and I think most people would admit, that most of the police men and women that I've seen have been outstanding. When you have something like this happen, you really — you look at it and you just say, how does a thing like that happen? Because it just seems so bad to watch. But. Uh, our police have been very outstanding. Our crime rates are way down right now in this country, and uh, way down. The police have done a great job. Something like this happens, and you really say, that's so, that's so bad in so many different ways and, and so unfortunate. Uh, you, you see that. Yeah, please the go ahead. Yes, uh, Mr. President, it certainly seems like you're sympathetic to some of the frustration um, expressed by the protesters last night. I want to ask you, first off, do you think there were good people out protesting in Minneapolis last night? Um, Did you and say, also, were they, you say it, were, were there, good, were there people? good people among the protesters? And then also more broadly, what is your message to black Americans and others who just are really frustrated and saddened to see another video of a black man being killed in police custody? Well, certainly there were a lot of different people, and they were good people, too, and they were protesting, and they were protesting for the right reason. They were protesting in honor of a man, George Floyd, where something happened that shouldn't have happened, in my opinion, from what I've seen. Uh, certainly something happened that shouldn't have happened. And, uh, yeah, you had a lot of people out there that were protesting out of sorrow, and then you had people that got out of control, some people. And uh, they did a very — I think they did a great disservice to their state and to their city and to — to really our country, what they did last night. And we brought in the National Guard today, and they're there. And that won't happen again. It can't happen again. We can never let that happen again. That was run by the mayor of a city, and uh, it got — in all fairness to him, it, he was in a tough position. But I don't think they were very well prepared. But we brought in the National Guard. They'll be very prepared tonight. Thank you all very much. Mr. Thank you, please. Thank you. Mr. President, would you support a civil Justice Department investigation? Mr. President, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on guys, let's go.